So what do you stand for? Power to change. Do I, I, I wrote a few words down because I love that song so much. I'd never heard it, Natalie, until you chose it. When you ask who I am, do I have a vision? I stand for the power to change. I live for the perfect day. I love till it hurts like crazy. Yes? Kim and I. Yes. What do you stand for? Do you stand for anything in your life? I mean, is there anything that you stand for? Just think about it. Don't, don't answer out loud. Just think about it. But what do you stand for? And then when you take a stand, what happens? I'll just speak for myself. Sometimes when I take a stand, I stand for this. And then what happens? I get pushed and I get pulled and I go, wah. And it's like, are you sure? Spirit goes like, are you sure? And I'm like, oh, I'm not so sure. Yes. I'm sure. Oh, push me, pull me. You ever been pushed? You ever been pulled? By anything in life? Okay, now we got some nods. So I'm a, um, the hugging saint, right, James? Saint, guru, yeah. The hugging woman, the amazing woman who hugs for hours on ends was asked this recently um, by a child, actually. And the child said, everything in God's creation is absolutely beautiful, except human beings. Why is it that human beings alone are killing each other and following the path of self-destruction? That was the real question. Why is it that we, human beings, humankind, are on this path of violence and here's what she replied. She said once, she replied with a story like she likes to do. Once two people visited a rose garden. It's a beautiful rose garden. And the first person was lost in his thoughts of his girlfriend. And he was thinking, how nice would it be if I could give my girlfriend this flower? And how happy she would be when I gave it to her. And the second man, however was upset on seeing the roses because his thought process was going like this. How many roses have I given to my girlfriend? How many times have I tried giving her a beautiful flyer, flower and still she eloped with somebody else? Oh. <laughs> he plucked the rose and he trampled it under his feet. But then Alma continued. The flowers were the same. The rose garden was the same. But they gave two different experiences in two different people. This was due to the mindset of the person. To the mindset of the person. Likewise, in God's creation, it is, there is perfect harmony. And it is the human beings, us, that bring disharmony. It's the selfishness of humans that has affected the harmony of the world. A knife can be used to stab a person or by a doctor to save a life. A fire can be used to burn down a house or to cook food. It depends on how we use it. Instead of blaming God for the problems that humanity encounters, let us strive and rectify our mistakes. Instead of blaming something outside of us or God, for our problems, we need to change our mindset. We need to come into alignment with the laws of the universe that are greater than any given moment, any situation, any circumstance. Now, our world is a crazy world right now. I mean, you know, with the, uh, just the ISIS stuff going on and the political things and, you know, all of this stuff that, that is going on in our world, and yet what we know and what we teach is there's only one presence and one power. One presence and one power active in my life, but in the universe. There's only one power. So how do you reconcile the one power with the drama trauma that happens in the world with the illusions that, uh, that don't feel very illusory, right? With the illusions that, that look like, no, this is happening. This is happening in my life. It's happening to my family member. It's happening in my world. It affects me. It's wrong and I don't like it. Together? It's wrong and I don't like it. Well, thank you. 
I think that was God. <laughs> and if that was God, I better rework the talk. <laughs> but what if the question becomes, not so much, why is this happening to me? But rather, what can I see here? How can I bring God here? How can I bring my full soul here? How can I bring love to this moment? How can I impact this situation in a positive way? I have a, a, a friend from um, Kansas City, and she's got a little brother. She's in her late 30s, and she's got a little brother who's 18 years old, and he was just, he's been having a lot of really weird things happen in his physical body. And uh, he's an athlete, and he, her little brother, I mean, Kelly is my size, and her little brother is like 6'3 and, you know, 250 pounds or something like this. But she goes, my little brother, my little brother, my little brother. <laughs> and, uh, but he's been diagnosed with this absolute horrendous, very, very rare thing. I and mean, she's been walking through this process of diagnosis that started with a lot of pain in this young man who's, who's a football player, so he knows pain. I mean, he deals with pain every time he's on the field. But it was... Anyway, long process, but to watch her walk this process very publicly and all the way up, the diagnosis, he's going for more tests next week. So we're right in the middle of it. It's happening right now. This past week he had surgery, and, and like many of us know, the first day out of surgery, it was like, oh, a piece of cake. We're still on morphine and all kinds of whatever the drugs they put in the IVs. And the next day out of surgery, we go, oh, not so much, and, and, and really dealing with a lot of issues in this young man's body. And um, they're very much in it. But what I want to say about that is, is she has been able to, up till now, feel her humanity and stand in her divinity. She's been able to look at her little brother through the eyes of spirit, knowing that he is perfect, whole, and complete, and there is nothing wrong with him, no matter what it looks like at the same time as acknowledging the absolute devastation, the fear, the anguish, the terror, and the grief that she and her brother and their family are standing in. That's the trick. That's the place of standing in the absolute, embracing the relative. The relative is like the world, the world of our life, the world of what we experience. But what she's been able to model is how to not say, and she said it plenty, but not live in, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to Levi? Why is this happening? But instead, how can I stand in it? Given that this is happening, how can I stand how can I stand? So when life gives you push and it gives you pull and it gives you like whacking out and gives you all kinds of opportunities to be outraged or, or crushed or appalled by the things of the world, ask a different question. What's the deeper thing that's going on here? The path through any situation is to identify well, it's to look, see, tell the truth, and then take authentic action. So when you look, you look at what's going on. When you see, you see a deeper truth. What's the deeper emotion? If you are outraged by something, what's the deeper? What's underneath that? What's under, when you dive, a deep dive into your psyche, through your emotional body, into your spiritual body, what is that deeper place and what is it calling you? to do and to be. Or when you're appalled or like you're grieving or you're hurt or you're, you're struggling or you're angered by something, what you look at, at the thing that's going on, you look at how you're triggered, how you're pushed, and then you look deeper and you begin to see. And what you'll begin to see is a value, a value that life is either giving you or not giving you, a life, a value that you're being called to express or called to be or called to stand in a different place. And so when you go deeper, then you become less a victim to the world. You become, you stand in a place, you're able to stand in a place where you're less about reaction and you're more able to respond. 
And when you're able to respond, when you're connected to spirit, when you found your center, then you can respond from a place of knowing that there's how many powers in the universe? One. There's still only one. There's still only one. It's the one only power, even in the midst of our humanity, which gives us lots of duality and lots of polarity. So when you're pushed or you're pulled, look at what's deeper. So there was a little girl. She was about mm, seven or eight years old, and she lived down the road from a church, and she was all dressed up in her church clothes, going to Sunday school, but she was a tad little bit late, so she was running. Running, running, running. Please, God, please, God, don't let me be late. Please, God, don't let me be late. And she's running, 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 and she tripped and she fell. And she, oh, man. And she got up and her dress was torn and it was all dirty. And she's like, oh. And she started running. She said, okay, God, please don't let me be late, but please don't push me either. <laughs> I gave you time. <laughs> But when we look at those deeper impulses, that push, that push, when life is pushing you, it's often, often, not always, but often coming from a place of discontent in your, in your, in your being, in your life. It's like, you know, I don't want that anymore. I'm tired of that. I don't want this disease. I don't want this money problem. I don't want this. It's, I don't like it. I want it to change. So, so that's like life sort of pushing you in a different direction, and then pulling, like, like, do you ever feel pulled? Like, you know, you stand in center and you go, ha, huh, here I am, and then you go, ah, and then you go, what? And then you go, whoa, but the pulling is often, and not always, but often that deeper yearning in your soul, that longing for something more. For that longing for more love, more connection, more abundance. And so when, you, when you're feeling that push, ah, then what's underneath it? What, what is it that your soul is calling you to be or to do? or to walk away from, or to walk into. When you're being pulled, what is that yearning? You know, what, what is your vision? What do you stand for? What is that thing in your soul calling you to express more of? So you can create like life visions, or you can create goals from the push me and the pull me, but that's not really the place to be operating from. Does, that's not to say we don't operate from those places. But if you can picture a great big circle and the push me and the pull me are out on the edges of the circle. But what we want to do is acknowledge when I'm being pushed or when I'm being pulled. Look again at what's deeper and come find center. Come find the center of the circle. Come find the center of your heart, of your mind, of your soul. Come find God. There's a great book. It's out of print now, but it was uh, really one of my favorite Eric Butterworth books called The uh, Concentric Perspective. Anybody remember that? Quite a few years back, I had a couple nods, yeah. Uh, one of my favorites, and I used it for many, many years. I actually stumbled upon it, you know, jumped off my bookshelf again recently. It's like, oh, there it is. But, but really, it's like if you're at the center of a spoke, if you're at, or not the center of the spoke, the center of the hub, the center of the wheel, then you are centered. It's like being at the eye of the storm, the eye of the hurricane, the eye of the needle. It's that place of stillness. And the further you get out, especially on a wheel, and, and picture like old-time old wagon wheels, right? Not fancy, smancy, expensive rubber wheels, but old, you know, you, you're, you're out on the edge of the wheel and you're going to get bumped up by every stick and every bump and every rut and every, you're going to get bumped up all over the place. But when you come to the center, it's a much quieter ride. It's a much quieter experience when you're centered. So when you look at your longings and you look at your discomfort, allow those to be indicators. Allow those to be indicators to something that is moving within you. Something that is as quiet 
as an impulse, an impulse out of the depth of your being. The impulse is a very pulse of creation itself. Barbara Marks Hubbard talks about the, the impulse of creation from the beginning of time. She says, in the very, very beginning of time, before there was anything at all, in the time of no thing at all, there was an impulse so great. There was an impulse so great that light was created. And from that light, then there came an impulse so great that land was created. Planets and universes were created. And from that, there was an impulse so great that life was created. And it goes all the way up. And there was an impulse so great in the animal kingdom that humans were created. It comes out of an impulse. There's an impulse going on on our planet. That impulse, when it gets so great, we will catapult. We will quantum leap into the awareness that God is present. That we are one. We are one. Like each one of us in the room here is like leaves on one single tree. Like we're one, and we don't know it. We spout it, we say it, we think it, sometimes we believe it, but until we've come to integrate it and to know it and to live it, our world isn't going to change much. But we're the ones. We're the ones. Like if we knew that humanity, every single person on the planet, and I mean every single person, not just the ones we like, Every single person on the planet is simply a wave in the ocean of humanity. We are not separate. We are one. And when we come into that awareness, when we come into that place where our being goes, whoa, yeah, that is so true, then from that place we can begin creating authentically. We can begin to align with the vision that God would have for me, that God would have for you, God would have for us, to align with that and then to be catapulted into it. As opposed to, juxtaposed with, I'm over here and I don't want any more of this because I'm feeling na, 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 and I just, na, 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 and I'm on, and I don't know why my affirmations won't work and my vision board doesn't work and I don't like my life, right? It's like nothing's going to happen except more of that, right? Except more of that. Come center, find God, practice your spiritual principles, know that God is, that you are, and that all as well. And from that place, so you, so you go to a different place. Can you feel that? I mean, that side of the stage is so tough today. I'm going to go there again. It's like it's heavy. It's not this side of the room by any means. It's only this <laughs> side of the carpet. It's so heavy with all the things I don't want and all, right? Oh, but I just remembered I'm one with God. I just remembered that I have all the love of the universe inside of me. I just remembered that I'm a part of the Christ mind. And from here, and from here, who do I get to be? From here, what do I get to do? From here, what is the impact that I can make on humanity? And then from here, I want you to get this. This is really big. From here, I can go back to here and embrace all of that stuff. I can embrace all that drama trauma. Not that I want to, like, condone and say it's all okay, and, and, you know, but I can embrace that it's happening. And I can hold my space. Because my space isn't my space anymore, it's God's space. It's spirit's space. Because I got myself, my ego, my agenda, my need to be right, my fear, my anger, out of the way at least for a moment. And that's all we're called to do. We're just called to do it for a moment, and then another moment, and then another moment, and then another moment. So don't let it be too big. Just come right now. In this moment, because this is the only moment that you ever have. 
But in order to come fully into this moment, you have to gather up all this stuff in your mind that's about the past and go, okay, okay, got it, got it, come on, come on, come on, right? But just come this moment. All this stuff in the future about what's your future, what, 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 what. Go, okay, it's like just gather it up, just come. Let it come right now, Whew, right here in this real moment. And give it to God, give it to light, give it to love. Give it away. Give it away and you will find the place, the possibility of your greatest dreams the possibility of realizing your greatest dreams. What do I stand for? The power to change. What is my greatest dream? I have a joke I have to share. It relates, I promise. So the Pope had a greatest dream. He had a greatest dream. He had the biggest dream he could ever think of. Now you think, what kind of dream would the Pope have? Well, this Pope's dream was to drive. And he landed in, I think it was probably not Dallas. It was, I don't know where it was. Maybe New York City. Maybe it was Dallas. He landed in Dallas. Let's go with Dallas. The Pope landed in Dallas. And he's coming to Unity of Dallas to speak to us about how unity beliefs are so right on. And he's realizing it, right? How cool is that? How much better could I life? And look at this place. It's packed because the Pope's coming. Anyway, so the cab driver, the limo driver, excuse me, after getting all the Pope's luggage loaded into limo and he doesn't travel lightly, the driver notices that the Pope is not yet getting into the car. And he says, please, excuse me, your eminence, would you please take your seat so we can leave? And he says, well, to tell you the truth, they never let me drive at the Vatican and I really, really want to drive today. He says, I'm, I'm sorry. The driver says, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't let you do that. No, no, I'd lose my job, and if something should happen, oh, my gosh. And the driver goes on and on, and the Pope says, well, there might be something extra in it for you if you let me drive, like the doorway to heaven, maybe. And so reluctantly, the driver gets in the back seat as the Pope climbs in behind the wheel, and the driver's praying, and he's going, I hope I don't regret this, and so quickly he regrets his decision. When after exiting the airport, the Supreme Pontiff floors it, floors it, accelerating to 105 miles an hour on 635. <sighs> That's impossible. <laughs> okay, I don't know if it was Dallas. The Pope floors it to 105 miles an hour, and the driver is going, please slow down, Your Holiness, please slow down. You're going to get us killed, and oh, dear God, I'm going to lose my license. Oh, no. And the Pope keeps the pedal to the metal, and he keeps going, and he keeps going until he hears sirens. Woo, woo, woo. Do you have the siren sound on your drums, Henry? No. Oh, well. And so the Pope pulls over, and he rolls down the window, and the cop approaches, and the cop takes one look at him, and he goes right back to his motorcycle and gets on the radio. Driver's having a panic attack. But the cop gets on the dispatch. He goes, I need to talk to the chief. I need to talk to the chief right now. I need the chief. I need the chief right now, right now. The chief gets on the radio and goes, what is going on? He goes, I just stopped a limo going 105 miles an hour. The chief says, so bust him. He goes, I can't do that. I don't think we should do that. I think he's really, really important. All the more reason. No, I mean really important. And the chief says, well, who you got there? The mayor? Nope, bigger. The governor? Nope, bigger. Well, who is it? The cop goes, I think it's God. <laughs> what makes you think it's God? He's got the Pope as a driver. <laughs> Get the Pope as your driver. No, go beyond that. Get God as your driver. Let God be your driver. When you're pushed and you're pulled by life, when things happen and things are going to happen on the planet, find your center. Find God. Find the still point in the pendulum swing. Find that place that is spirit, that is clear, that is driven and guided and blessed and supported by that which we call God, by creation itself, by spirit. 
find that place in your own being through your practice of prayer and meditation, through your practice of journaling, through your practice of coming to church, through your practice of looking for God in this moment and every moment. Find that place. And from that place, you will no longer be pushed and pulled by the outer, but you will be driven by God himself, by God herself. So it is. God bless you.